I'm live now. I sure did click the start recording button instead of uh, start streaming button. Hmm. We've made a little progress. <laughs> We've made a little progress since uh, starting our recording session, apparently. <clears throat> I guess let me catch you up where we where we've uh, got to so far. Uh, okay. <clears throat> we have this uh, sample. It is a guitar kind of going what? And we, well, we messed with it a lot. We did some crazy stuff to it. Here you can see here the original. Oh, well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves there. Uh, so that's the original uh, sample here. And we modulated it quite a lot. Uh, we did a band pass on it, a very heavy band pass. You can see this in the EQ here. And um, then added some distortion below that in the panel here, that <clears throat> that distortion fills in the gaps a lot so we get this kind of a sound, as opposed to uh, without the distortion, something more like that, kind of pitiful. Uh, the distortion really, really fills in those gaps on uh, and adds a lot of gain. So we have those two uh, little spills, and then we've got all of these little in-between notes. You can see I have really chopped this up and modulated that whole little riff here into a bunch of notes. I've even labeled um, which notes are which. Let's take a look at that. I'll go ahead and mute everything else. We can hear where we started today. This is uh, where I started the stream was with this built up. So that is the plan. I'm not sure if we'll keep this uh, little portion over here towards the end. I don't really know how I feel about it. It gets a little bit frantic. I might even decide to just repeat this stuff for the from the first two bars. Not too sure yet, but uh, would be would be good if we could maybe figure out something to do with uh, this, this back section that is still kind of groovy. <clears throat> so then uh, I've been working on picking out a bass sound and a bass line. I had originally, if I can find the MIDI for it. I may have actually already erased that. I believe I did. It's unfortunate. Uh, um, let's see if I have some undos and fix this. Go ahead and copy this before I delete it by undoing things. There we go. So somewhere in here is. Oh, wait, never mind. There it is. Up here, I think. Yes, this was the riff on electric piano, so I can pull this electric piano up. Turn off these uh, these filters. I was using those for information. That oh, um, so this is the notes uh, without all the distortion. A bit easier to tell what's going on. So out of this, I was kind of hearing that C droning and decided I liked that drone, but I didn't want to drone on C because I was composing in C sharp. And droning on the seventh is kind of a wonky feeling. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So I started droning, I think it was on G sharp instead. Uh, C sharp. I started droning just on the root. And that is actually sounding fairly nice. I think I wanted to make these very slightly staccato just to make sure if I put this into like bass sound, it'll fire off. Sometimes these uh, bass notes don't actually kick if uh, they're right up against each other. Let's see, um, so this was what I had been working on when I realized that I hadn't actually started streaming and I've been recording for about 20 minutes. Total face palm. So this, these last three notes, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I think they're a little whack. I don't know what to do with those last three notes yet. We're going to figure something out there. Um, you know, all feedback is welcomed also. I always appreciate uh, anybody giving their input if they have any insight. I, uh, you know, I'm not really a famous musician or anything, so I'm definitely not full of myself. I, uh, you know, a big part of why I'm here is uh, because I want to improve, and I know there's a bunch of amazing musicians out there that might be willing to uh, share their feedback. Let's see. So 
this though, I think is fairly decent for, for what we're working with. I, I wanted to kind of pick out more of a groove uh, because this drum loop, while it is fat, it is not what we want to use. This is, you can see it's a dubstep drum loop and I'm wanting to compose more of a house kind of track. Um, so we need a consistent kick um, coming every, uh, every beat really. And um, yeah, that we want that kick coming in and then the snare snare we don't want this kick snare kick kick snare pattern that you get with dubstep so we're gonna have to do our own drum pro this just will not work and really this is just an example um so let's see this rhythm here i don't know i think the rhythm is why it's a little whack because there is all this stuff going on over here in this line but here it is just and and they're they're oddly timed perhaps we can adjust a little bit um yeah you can see here this note carries over into when this riff starts up uh yeah and then these notes start a bit late so i'm thinking if we delete this we just drag this whole thing back something like that because then we have, well, then we've got a C or a D, sh a C sharp under a D sharp. And this B, oops, that's a, that's, oh, okay. I meant for this to be an A. That could be why it's, that, that could also be contributing to why it sounded bad, because I don't think B is in our, is in our key. Hmm, that kind of sounds even more why. Hmm, so I don't think the C sharp over the D is good. And I don't think the A sharp over the D, it, uh, I don't think that's good either. Uh, that's kind of a weird interval. I don't know about that. Um, so we could try to do mimic it sharp mm. Mm. I don't know about that I don't know about that maybe we want to go low I think we want to go lower here so this last note is over a C so this G-sharp is a fifth for that. Maybe we could do the fifths. That would be the A-sharp. This should be the G. This. Something like that, perhaps. Hmm. Maybe this, maybe we'll pause here. Hmm. Wonder, I don't know how that, it's not too bad. Hmm. I don't know. I think these are too high. Bit lower. I don't know. Mess around with it a bit.
actually. Take a bit. Hmm. Oh. I'll have to decide what to do here. There's uh, so many options with a baseline, and you can make it complicated, but a lot of the time it's better to keep it simple. Hmm. I'm overcomplicating it a bit. This uh, first bit here sounds pretty nice. If we maybe did something like that, it might be a bit better. What if we just did that again? Even this too. Might be onto something now. Okay, hold up. That was that was great. I like that little drop down here. I think that I think we found something that works here. Uh, we can maybe run with it a little bit to get our groove going on, on the drum. So let's shut this shut this synth up for a bit. After hearing it over and over again, I definitely want to put some filters on that and make it a bit less shrill. So we'll work on that a little while. Uh, so, for drum programming, um, what we want to do here, we want to get a really nice kick. We want to layer that kick with a really nice click. And we want to layer that with a really nice thong. Um, if we can get all three of those layered together and sort of meshing like one sound, then we'll have that great house kick feeling. Um, I am kind of wanting to do a little bit of a dubstep snare sound, so we're going to layer a snare with a thonk and a clap, uh, and that will give us that dubstep snare sound. That will be really good, too. Again, it's going to take a little bit of mixing just to get them to overlap nicely, uh, but it should be able to pull it off. Uh, so let's see here. Um, we'll start by going over to our loop browser, um, just picking out any old sample. Um, you can take pretty much any drum one shot you want, and you can mess with it and put effects on it to make it sound better. So, uh, But you do want to just make your work a little bit easier by picking something that sounds close to what you have in mind. <clears throat> so uh, we'll start with a kick. And let's try to find one that is a nice full sound. So that's got a little bit of what I'm talking about. It's pretty punchy. Um, <clears throat> I would maybe want a little bit more attack on it. Uh, you don't want too much attack on a kick, but that sounds very strong click, and I want to put a click layer under it anyway. So that's even less attack. Oh, that's, that's nice. It's got a bit of an oomph kind of feel to it. Oh, no. That one's pretty good. This one might fit our needs. Ooh, okay, so I think this is probably, that's probably the one that's closest to us. Now you'll notice I, I have these cymatics um, samples. These are royalty-free. They're wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, they do request that you don't just arrange their samples. Um, so like this, drums, this drum loop, they would request that I chop that up and mess with it instead of just including it in a track. But you can get these for free yourself. Really cool group cymatics, I recommend. They are awesome. They also have some paid sample packs, of course. Um, this, I'm not an ad or anything, but um, I do. I use these quite a bit. They're really helpful as a starting point uh, if you need some one shots. So just listening to the rest of these, we got that one's big and boomy. I like this. Um, I have a track that I use this in where it's a almost like a double kick drum going very boomy. Lots of reverb. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. Go with this D sharp one. I think that's the one. Um, so we're going to create a new audio track. See, it's way louder than all the other audio tracks. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. We'll just drop this in here. So this is our kick. We can see here there's our sine waves um, for it. Whoops. Aggressive. Our sine wave for it is a pretty... Uh, there's a little bit of attack here, you can see, in this little curve upwards. And then some decay. That's that downward curve. And then... There's this distortion that adds on a really heavy tail. That's where you get that, that drumming feeling. So this drum, if you cut it off, um, that is if we have, say, a couple side by side, a bit like this, uh, 
Oh, is it? Let me grab it. Oh, let me grab it. <laughs> if we have a couple side by side, a bit like this, um, then we get we will get a very nice um, double kick kind of feeling. Um, well, that's a bit a bit too fast. Yes, you get the idea. We want to put here to have it on rhythm. But yes, and we can we can layer that. Um, we can do as many of these tailless uh, kicks as we want. Just dropping those in. Oops. We could get pretty wild with our patterns here as far as um, how many of these kicks we wanted to do with this drum. Just on the note of creativity, I don't really think I want to do anything too wild like that. I really like this kind of oomphy sound. But we might chop it up a little bit to get a couple of. If we put this too late, though, then it does sound kind of weird. Um, you can hear there's a bit of an oomph, and then it just kind of stops. So we would have to time that right maybe um, during the sustain of the actual kick itself, so a bit later, once it's had a bit of time to reverberate. That's, uh, that sounds a little bit weird, just depending on the timing. Also, I forgot to mute this. OK, so um, when we are doing drum programming, you want to start with your kick. You want to go ahead and pick out a, a snare sample too. I'm not going to do layering yet. We want to get the um, we want to get the the groove down, we want to get the basic sound down before we get our layering. Because if it doesn't sound good with crappy sounds, it's not going to sound good with fancy, nice sounds that you've put a ton of time into designing. To make it sound good with crappy sounds, well, make it sound even better later on. Um, we're not going to put too much work into refining our starting point. We're just going to work on this rhythm, really focus on establishing the groove. For that, we need a snare. Let's find another snare one shot somewhere. Uh, it's a little lo-fi snare. That's pretty nice. Got a bunch of snares here from Odyssey. There's also a bunch of stock snares and snares I've picked up from other places as well. See, I am a cymatic snares. Um, we've also got some snare beats that we could use if we really wanted to. Um, some of these are really good to sort of chop up and sample. So don't count these out, but um, <clears throat> for the most part, I think I like to start with uh, just a nice one shot. I like to do a lot of layering, so uh, these one shots are perfect for me. This, this almost sounds like a clap. I would want to use this uh, maybe for a dubstep. So I think it was um, it was Dead Mouse who said when you're picking out a snare. Um, oh gosh, I I, I don't want to I don't want to paraphrase it. Uh, let me let me look this quote up. It was it was what, what was it that he said? Um, I think he said, "Does this?" Oh, I, I I think I'm misquoting him. But he said, um, you need to ask yourself, uh, does this snare really slap? He said it in a funny way. I can't remember his wording exactly, and I don't want to misquote him. But he, he said, you know, does this snare really blow me away, basically? Um, is it a really kick-ass snare that you just got to have? And if it doesn't feel right, it's probably because it isn't right. Let's get a little bit of a listen to this bass. Sound, uh, then pick out this snare. Very growly, low kind of bass sound, and we've got a kick with a la with a long tail, a lot of punch to it. <clears throat> but we probably want a kind of a, a boomy snare. Well, these are house snares. Maybe one of these will sound nice. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah, this is kind of what I was looking for. Now I'm curious how these sound. I wonder why it's not, uh, not letting me listen to it. Take these out. Oh. I like that as much as the E one.
I don't like this. I think I think this snare is what I want to start with as a building point. Okay, so we have a kick with a lot of tail, but a snare with a lot of tail. Very good. These two will sound fairly decent together. Let's try to set up a basic kick snare pattern. Um, if you listen to a lot of house music, you'll notice that uh, they have this kick happening very regularly. What we can do is have this kick four times per bar, just like so. Repeat over here. That, and now we've got our entire kick pattern set up. It's actually very easy uh, for house. Uh, we can add in some extra kicks if we want to, but for the most part, that's not really necessary. Um, then we want to put these uh, snare sounds right in between. Again, very simple for a basic house beat. You don't need to get too complex with it because you're not wanting to distract from the bass. Let's see, so then we have this. Good sound, fairly decent. So we'll let that fire. Okay, well, nope, nope, that is, that's too fast. I'm realizing now that three to four is this region. So we have accidentally programmed this in double time. So what we're gonna do is take out these, and just every other, there we go. Um, well, this is probably wrong now. Um, it would be this. Silly me. Uh, no. So these are. There we go. Yeah, something to that effect. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. <laughs> and you can maybe spice it up with like a kick, kick, snare at the end. Something like this. Oh yeah, we're grooving now. Okay, so what we want to do with this is then layer this. Now that we've got a bit of a groove, um, we want to make this sound good with everything else. So let's drop these down a few octaves. Sorry if that was too loud. And uh, we can put this bass sound over it. Let's see how this all sounds together. Hopefully this doesn't sound too bad. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. We're definitely not going with this bass sound in the long run. Um, so if it doesn't sound terrible, that's probably a good thing. Probably a good thing. Um, it does sound a little bit like a fart, but again, that's probably just because the bass sound is awful. We're going to replace it with a better bass sound anyway. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and copy this over. Let's see. Hear that drum beat again. Hmm. Um, you know, I've got an idea. What if we did something more like... Instead of that, like this. Hmm. These aren't quite lining up. Now, what if we did maybe this? What about that? So maybe we bring this snare forward a bit to emphasize that extra hit. Whoa. Hmm. Uh, maybe we could delay it. So, with um with your kick snare with your patterns here see that where this uh, kicks out, we want, where this cuts out, we want to fill this in with some kind of drum sound. We want to put a snare there. Um, and then we want to kick with the bass. So we've got a kick here. We could put another kick here. Um, again, just sort of mess with things. Um, or we could even do, say, a kick and snare together. That is not such a bad option either. This kick and snare do kind of emphasize. And layering this kick with uh, every single bass hit is a pretty common technique. 
gives you a little bit of an 808 feeling to the vibe. Um, and we can still have these uh, these drums sitting. So let's let's this again just by itself. Uh, it's a little bit hectic. We improve this. Um, I like maybe this idea. Check this out. We adjust this bass line a little bit to adapt to that. We're having a kick start here. Maybe we should have a note start there as well. Then we could do this. Hmm. Oh, kind of nice. We've got this pause here where the bass cuts out. I don't mind that. Got a kick here, a kick here. We don't have a kick here, um, but I think that's okay. I would try to do a double kick sound, something like this. See that sounds. I think that's a bit too much though. Mm, yeah, I don't like that as much. I like it better if there's no kick there. Yeah. But we're going to give this a tail so it doesn't sound so cut off. <clears throat> okay. So, um, from here, I think it is... Time to take a brief swim. This is uh, nice. We've made some progress. We picked up uh, a kick sound, a snare sound. Um, I'm gonna go take some bottle, go take care of some bodily functions, and have a couple puffs. I will be back in just a couple minutes. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you're having a good time. We need some hi-hats. We still want to do drum programming. We've got our groove kind of locked in a little bit. You can, you'll notice uh, I'm very willing to mess with this bass line because the drums are really what's going to drive the groove. We can make the bass line adapt. Let's go ahead and add in another audio track. We'll pick that. Let's see. Got some one shots here. I like this one. It's a little bit wet. <clears throat> a little bit of a, a splashy kind of uh, hi hat sound. And just add this in. This uh, keep this. Mm, that might be too. Let's do something. Like Back soon up there. There we go. Slow down the hats a bit. Put a couple runs in here. So that kind of ends on the hat. I think we maybe go hat ride and then crash. Tick, tick, tick. It's good. It's sounding good so far. Let's put a let's go for that ride then. And we want to get a ride in probably at least twice in this bar just to help pull the groove together. And where we put this ride really matters. So let's mess around with it a bit. <clears throat> want a nice subtle ride. We don't want the one that's too splashy because it'll pull away from and clash a bit with the uh, splashiness of our 
I hack you. So let's see, that's way too splashy. So that's a little better. Some of these are like almost like crashes. You want a nice short one? Very dry. Ooh, that's pretty good. this. Got this very dry ride here. Doesn't have a super long tail. Just drop this in. Uh, hmm, I see maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Once. Oh, whoops. That's not what I meant to do. Copy that, because it doesn't copy. So something you'll notice here is that I'm taking care to make my drums playable. You want to make sure not to have more than two cymbals on the same beat because the drummer only has two hands. Likewise, you don't want to have um, a cymbal and two drums on the same beat, say, or rather a drum and two cymbals on the same beat because that is not possible. So wherever we have a hat here, we cannot put, let's say, a ride um, unless there is no hand drum beneath it. So say on, on this beat where we have this ride, we cannot put uh, a snare or a tom Otherwise, it, this whole section will become impossible to play. Unless you, I don't know, have a, a two-headed drumstick or something silly like that. What if we gave drummers two-headed drumsticks? I bet they could do some crazy stuff. Because I, I personally, I suck at drum. I would love to have some drummer friends to tell me how, what, to, what the heck to do here to make it sound good fast. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I like doing it. I think this, this part is really fun. But uh, yeah, I do... Acknowledge it is that's a whole is a whole instrument like whole ass instrument yeah complicated stuff <laughs> okay so I don't know the, the, the more I hear that ride I'm not sure how I feel about it um we might have that second ride we might take that out we're gonna go ahead we're just gonna run with it for now it's not too bad. Really splashy crash is what we're Boomy. That's not so bad. That's the one. Do that. Uh, yeah. You can just have this crash run through the entire bar. Oh my. It's a very long crash. Oh, it doesn't copy sometimes. Hmm. Crash every bar, not good. Not digging the crash every bar. Maybe crash every... Something like this. Hmm. Well, these are two different drum beats. Wait a minute. Hold on over here. Mm. Like this isn't as refined. Oh, right. Don't we have a different riff on the back half? Ooh. Actually, these drums can't be the same. Hmm. So let's focus on this first part first and we'll work on the second part. Mm. In that case, this crash is too much. What a short crash. That's not, that's not. Sorry about that. Maybe this one? Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. But yeah, maybe uh not every bar. No. 
Yeah, that's better timing for it. Mm. So let's fix this, uh, this back drum half then to match with our second part here, our B side of this beat. <laughs> So this is what we'll, this section of the bass is what we'll use when we want to switch things up. The drums are not going to match. So. Subtle, but um, when we switch up the drum patterns to match, it will really drive that point home that this is a different rhythm. So, let's see here. I like to use this bar to help me match up the rhythm with the drums. I think it's super helpful want to have pick layer with the bass. That's what I'm doing at this point, just to get started. Pick bass. And then we have this uh, triple here. Three notes here. So <clears throat> what to do with this part? Hmm, pretty nice. Well, maybe we can triple kick. I was saying we could do something like this. It's not too bad. I don't like that. Um, we'd need to adjust this. This is impossible to got to fix these snares. That. I'm not sure which beats exactly you want to emphasize yet, so these these might Maybe. Mm, it's too frantic. Mute these snares. Let's just hear the kicks. Okay. <laughs> but where do we fit the snare in there? We need to put the snares where there are these pauses. I don't know if I want to do that kick snare, kick snare, kick snare. Maybe more like... Hmm.
の世界に。Be nice. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> so the baseline is kind of running with this, but it's also kind of running counter to it. We have our sneer hitting a bit on this. So we're going to try to de emphasize some of these bass notes, the back beats here. To pick out exactly what. Guys, maybe we do something more. <clears throat> There's on the back beats, maybe? Oh, I got changed. That sounds pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our groove drill, our groove locked in. I doubt these hi hats fit. It'd be nice if they did. And we don't want a hi hat and a snare anywhere that a ride would normally go. But this right here means that this hi hat. This pattern doesn't quite fit together unless we move the ride. Move it slightly. If that will sound. And moving the ride can throw people off on the dance floor, which isn't always a good idea. Um, and change up the hi hat pattern, I guess. <clears throat> This. Triplet. We do single triplet, single triplet, single du double, single at the beginning, then becomes the next. Let's see. Triplet, triplet, single triplet, single. Be nice little. Hear that in action. Listen to. I hats. So the first one uh, starts it out, and then it turns into a gallop. It's a good way to help people lock into the groove with that subtle hi hat switch up when it repeats. So it starts out as something different than what it ends up being, um, but it is still the same the whole time. Music is weird, like. Let's see how that ride sounds. Like. So I feel like it's always good for the ride. Uh, I like it when it sounds the first hit almost feels like up, and the second hit feels like down. Be like yeah. If that's what your ride is doing for your for your beat, it's probably in the right place. You can maybe fine tune exactly what the ride sounds like. Here, all this together, both beats <clears throat> side by side, so we can see what we might have, what kind of transition we might. Have. So the second rhythm so it feels a lot faster. Second rhythm feels much faster. And the first rhythm, probably because of all the triplets, wind up forming. And we do have uh, that double kick in kind of an awkward spot, which leads to it feeling a bit stilted, more focused on the hi hats rather than kicks. Um, so this could be really good. Um, this section, I think, to bring in like a breakdown or something. Whereas I think this first section here is a little bit better for. Like, 
<clears throat> and we would want to put the crash I did. Have um split this up then. Um put this here. I believe I can repeat these lines. Repeat that, and then this. We want to take our drums right side section. Do the same thing here. Copy that. And this. Okay, so now we have off an eight, three. So this is four bar section. We have done four bars. <coughs> yeah. Only four bars? Hmm. Well, we might need to end. Um, yes, okay, well, we've got two sections. <laughs> I thought this was eight bars. It's actually only four. Man, 128 is fast. High tempo. I don't like that as much. Oh, the drums are wrong. That's why. Off. Copy the drums into the wrong place. That's better. Okay. So that is good, and then we can put this on top. So I'll be honest, that sounds terrible. That's really bad, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, because this is really just setting up. Let's actually see how this feels with the book. And that's really what we care about is that this sounds good together and that sounds pretty. So yeah, as long as we can run that on loop. That's really what matters. We can put whatever baseline we want beneath this um, and make it sound however we want. So I don't really know uh, then how droning on this, uh, this C sharp is actually going to sound. Because that sounded great. Droning on your tonic usually sounds good. but uh, So it could just be that this is a bad instrument for this section or that we need to do some effects or filtering. Let's see. So if I take this off, you get a very buzzy sound. It's definitely worse. Um, by transforming it a bit, so are some other options. Um, so we can mess with these. We can put some distortion on it. None of these are going to sound quite right uh, stock. We're going to have to mess with it a bit. So let's um, put this on repeat and just kind of play along. I'm going to take these notes out. Okay, I'm thinking. Let's, uh, let's space this out a bit. Put um, a reverb on it. Like this platinum verb. Pretty nice. Okay. 
So we've taken a little bit of the edge off of this. I think I'm also um, going to add another EQ. And I'm going to take some more of that high end off. I'm just going to cut this at 7,000. I think this has got way too much high end here. I think now, um, <laughs> sorry for driving one of you crazy. I think now we've got this filtered out a little bit, so it is not uh, quite so aggressive sounding. It's a bit smoother. I think it should fit in with the other sounds. We've cut off a lot of this high end, um, trimmed out a lot of the low end of that sound too. We don't want this sound and the low end clashing with that bass sound. That could be causing some problems with this bass line. Here, sound better together. Hmm. I'm really not sure about what to do with this i don't really know i feel like this uh aggressive i'm not sure what kind of baseline would pair well with something so fast moving So I could try to just follow along. I could actually take this. Okay, there. 
the original piece. Right? Hmm, that's not it either. Oh, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong. It's actually not so bad. Maybe we go with that. Maybe we go with that. I think I, <laughs> I drove one of the other chatters insane. Oh no, I'm sorry, viewer. Oh, they left. I feel bad. I did sound design. It is kind of painful sometimes. I do acknowledge you have to listen to the same thing. Oh, awful. I don't know how these producers do it on stream. I hear it like twice and they're like, oh yes, I know exactly what kind of modulation this would be. Uh, yeah. Gotta get one of them in here to teach me. Just like sensei, <laughs> notice me. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, we do know what these notes are. I think they're actually pretty similar. Do copy that. Got to do a little bit of editing. I think these notes line up. So you can see I have written out for myself what these notes are. Very <laughs> kind of me. So we've got C, D sharp, C, that's right, C, that's right. And it goes on. This is different here. It goes C. There. That's the same. Got a D sharp F sharp F. F sharp. F. And then this last note here is a. You need to get these to vibe a little bit better together. This top line is still a teeny bit shrill. This, I think, is a bit too loud. And we're going to change this, this bass sound anyway. Hmm. Coming along, though. Coming along. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, and then, let's see. so we've got a bass line, surprisingly following along with the melody. Usually that doesn't work as well as it seems like it is here. So maybe this would be better as a harmonic structure rather than a melodic, melodic structure. We've also got uh, this whole thing, which I think is already, this is different. Let me rename this. This is old baseline B side. Back of what's what? It's all composed on the piano. <clears throat> this is uh, baseline A. Baseline. Letter A side, B side, um, or that, and then we've got this uh, portion here. So, um, to that. Let's uh let's take this. I'm just gonna get rid of this out of the way. Lines up here. Back those up. Back all this.
out here. Eight. Because we are at such a high tempo that this is actually four bars here. Let's see if we zoom out, this is basically nothing. <clears throat> so we need to really make this work. What to do to make this sound a bit bigger? Let's see, and we can compare here. Let's go ahead and compare with our uh, old drum loop. Make sure it sounds better. That's pretty fat. Slow. I think I like this drum beat better. Oh, uh, you. <clears throat> I hope you do too. Um, so then, what do we do from here? Do from here. I think, I think that uh, we take a quick breather. Have a think. Uh, do a little planning sesh. It's, uh, caught me off guard a bit at this bass line. So melodic. Um, so. Excited about that. Maybe we could do like a, like a future house kind of thing. I could put some um, filtering on it, uh, a little bit of EQ passing. Oh, um, back and I'm going to have a break. program with one of my buddies thinking he might on stream with me but he is a little too intoxicated it seems he has forgotten how to log in <laughs> i even gave him a link and that he knows his password but so at least um yeah i'll have to wait for him to sober up but that's okay he's gonna come by another time it's gonna be rad he is a phenomenal rapper really really chill guy you're gonna like him. very cool person um, let's see. <laughs> so, he and his wife are having a, a great time tonight. I really hope. That's, that's good. Um, let's see. So, uh, let's get these overlay. Deck. We're still thinking, but figure it out. All right. <clears throat> so, we have four bars. Fantastic. Got a rhythm, and we've got a bass line that is actually surprisingly melodic. I'm digging it a little bit, um, but I don't think the instrument is really there. We're at the very least going to need some layers. Whoa. We're going to need some layers to fix stuff, make it sound, um, well, not so shitty. It sounds pretty basic at this moment. Um, yeah, we need the layers on the drums. We need like two or three layers for each of these drums for um, the kick and snare. And uh, we need layers on the bass, the synth as well. We need to find a way, we need to back this up with some synth. So let's hear it again before we get back into it. Okay. And um, we do have this other bass line here, which I do to like and the more i think about it the more i think it might actually work pretty nicely um oops. no actually never mind i don't like that at all but it's something with that with a similar rhythm i think could sound good So these are some interesting little riffs I think I would I could use 
But maybe it's weird that it starts back the same changes. What if it was like this? And we just embraced the differentness. Hmm. Made it. But it needs some adjustments. <clears throat> For this. This repeats, doesn't it? So we really just need to worry about one section of it. Zoom in a bit. Set a repeat. I guess whenever we want. You know, it doesn't actually repeat. We'll leave that there. <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. I'm looking forward to having him on. Having him on. Apparently, he already has a Twitch. So once he gets logged in, it's gonna be fun. Another musician in here. Maybe we can get some samples sent over live and uh, put them on top of some of this. What? I love uh, love collaborating with other artists. It's such a blast. <clears throat> hmm. So I like to put these snares. Oh, he's trying. <laughs> he's still trying. I suggested that he wait until he's sober up, but he's he's going for it. I, I hope he does it. It'd be fun. <laughs> so I'm putting these snares on the gaps uh, and the notes to emphasize those. I don't really know what to do here because there's just a lot of notes. So maybe can we do that? There was a network error. What? Um. That's not what I meant to do. No. Oh. Is very strange. Well, um, apparently he's getting error 2000. Let me see what that is. I, I wonder if I can troubleshoot him here. Give me just a moment. User doesn't have a secure network connection. Ah. Wait, he got logged in. Okay, okay. I think if he clicks this link. He should, he should make it in here. At the very least, a chat. Fingers crossed it works, maybe. <clears throat> I'd love to get his feedback. Very helpful. He always uh, gives good, good feedback. Right, we were working on this drum line. Lining this up here. I haven't actually heard this yet. Let's give it a listen. 
Yes. That's me. Okay, hello. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. I uh I think it might be on mute by default. Um, can't interact with it. Oh no, not good. Um, hmm. Okay. It looks like you can. Uh, That's interesting that it's taking you to info. It takes me to log in, but you're logged in. <laughs> oh no. Oh, okay. Hold up. I think I know what's up. Oh, good. Okay, so try hitting the three vertical dots and uh, next to the heart and the two rectangles, and um, it, there should be an option like open in browser, uh, something like that. I think what it's doing is it's trying to run it through Telegram, and Telegram is kind of freaking out. Um, so yeah, that might work. Oh, you're asking me, and then what? Uh, yes. Okay, so open in Samsung Internet. I think. In Samsung Internet? Uh, <laughs> would still ask you to log in, but it would remember. <clears throat> Hopefully that works. You can see, and I think you can hear me. That's good. It still is only saying one viewer, though, so it's not, I don't think it's registering on this. For some reason, it's stopped registering. While he's working on that, I gave him some suggestions. Um, let's hear this again. I think this was too too much. Do that either. Opposite these. Ooh, kind of like that. Got a nice groove to it. A little bit of a drumming pattern. Um, I don't know how I feel about these hi hats.
just hear it like I like that. I like that pacing a lot better. It fits much more. Let's hear it with this synth. Here. Um, so we haven't actually done these no programs. Okay. So we're looking at some C's here. is all the way out then need that Got F sharp C sorry F C F sharp and then another C in there. Got a C and an F. Let's hear how all this. Sounds. <laughs> there we go. Got this overlay. Hmm. Oh, not actually lined up well. So then we've got this other passage over here that we need to match up to, which is similarly timed, but the notes are slow. Let's see. That. Yeah, 16th note, right? Here we start to deviate from the C, we get a D sharp. F, C, F sharp. That's the same as before. Let me skip a note. F. It's taking out 
one of the notes and moving one of them. I like that one. <clears throat> I like it. Um, definitely see that very much like very good in the song. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> takes her a little off. Hard to play. Possible. <clears throat> Hi hat line. That was weird. It's getting funky. It's getting funky. I like it. <clears throat> got a little, got a little groove in here. And um, see, we're just keeping, keeping with that same kind of groove. Got that kick, 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 kick. Every other, you know. And then we're just adding in flourish. We're just adding in extra stuff. Um, putting in more and more and more just to uh, add some flavor to. It, you know, but uh, spice it up. Can't be just doing the very, very basic thing. People will get tired of that. And also, um, I'm not good enough. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not Deadmau5. I can't just put a Deadmau5 beat on there. You know, 
uh, act as though my skills at doing synth and bass lines and all of that are going to stack up. I gotta have intrigue in other ways. I gotta do my, my own unique thing. So that I don't wind up getting compared. Because if, the, if, if, if I, uh, you know, try to imitate, then I incline my audience to compare. And, well, <laughs> I have a lot to learn, I feel. Um, although, I guess folks tell me I'm, I've am i learned a lot already. That sounds pretty cool, though. Like I could get down to that, shuffle around a bit, shuffle around a bit. Okay, so we've uh, we've got four sections here then that we've put together. Yeah, uh, turn this old B side into a groovy area. Next, and copy this um, and rename this stuff. We've got. Baseline, line oops <laughs> yeah line c and baseline d this is oh i did that wrong baseline c also this is baseline d And it's good to have, um, you know, a lot of sections that are fairly similar um, in terms of tempo and rhythm, but uh, that have some differences between them. That way it doesn't get too stale um, while you're working with the same instruments. Yeah, at some point we might hear something to this effect. There probably will be um, a crash here or something like that. <laughs> I don't think that order is right. Maybe we would want to do something like this. Have that. Then uh, let's hear how it sounds if we grab this. Yeah, yeah. DC, DC. Oh, that's backwards again. Where's this? Back this forward and I still don't know how those fit together. Those fit together very well. Hmm. It'd be a little tricky trying to mesh these very slightly different rhythms. <clears throat> Maybe I'm switching up the drums too much. Might help to keep the drums the same, but then I'm switching up the rhythm on the melody. <clears throat> Not as good. Here, uh, this beginning section. And then something like a da 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 So we put this section next. Hmm. Maybe if there was some sort of transition phrase here. Well.
Let me grab some random riser. We can make one later. Surge. I think this will work fine. Grab that and make sure to make it a little bit quieter because these usually come out quite loud. Place that there. There's already a bit of a cut. This will work out fine. Maybe we cut back here. Something. Okay. okay, and then we need to put a some sort of bouncing ring on top of that. grab the end of this uh, you filter that down so here's what it will sound like at first like what if we chop uh do a few here like all this right there. This we jump to much later. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't have to really be perfectly on rhythm. Wait, wait. Copy that and take this tail off. Yeah, good. Kind of frantically. That's too. Let's cut this a bit lower. And copy that a few times itself. Give it kind of a uh, Oops. I had two things selected. Here. This riser so far. This is not where the riser is going to go. We're going to filter it down. Mm 
And with this layered on top, even see something similar happening up here at the beginning with like a snare right? snare roll. Good. You want um, all this to start up here. Pick up some room here. Normally this wouldn't start until 16. Guessing. Let's put that after the 16th bar. Check this out. Okay. Let's get we can this will give us an idea of uh kind of lead in we might have. And then what I can do to make that sound a bit less short, I can cut off this high end. See here if we analyze this. So, so much sound up here in the high end. So I like to cut my synths around 7,000, and I like to do a pretty hard cut. It's harsher sounds. So um, that will take out a lot of that bite. So um, even at that pitch, it's still pretty loud in uh, the 5K region. So normally what I would do is use this to bump up in hertz range. Just a touch because it adds a little bit of silver. I'm going to use this to down around 4,000. So... That helps a lot with that shrillness of that visual sound. In fact, let's bring down really high value. Let's bring down this area specifically. It is coming through really loud. Right there. Something like that. Really cutting out a lot of those harsher sounds. Now, I think we actually need a, a slump, smaller cue here. We need to focus more. What we want is a nice diagonal curve upwards. From the right to the left. Got too much sound over here. This is getting a little too. We do a bit more Q. More like that. Once again, a bit more Q here, or a bit less Q. Broaden that space out. Okay, and you can see that this, now we can hear that this stuff right below the 4000 hertz range is really shrill taking in. So let's also, a second, Filter. Something even lower, pulling out more of that sound. Let's do something more like around. Actually, drag that 2000 down. Maybe too high, but that's sounding a lot better already compared to without the filters here. We can turn these off momentarily. Ooh, yeah, that's harsh. That's hard to listen to. Um, in comparison, let me say something like this. That's why a big reason why you don't want to use just samples as they are. A lot of times they're not actually that good, and that's why they're free. Um, but with an equalizer, you can actually get a lot of work done. You can do some pretty powerful stuff here just by messing with these Q values a bit and moving these little balls around. Let's uh, bring that down even further here. I think we still need to take some of this edge off this region. We're getting it. That's about right. See, we're getting um, behind this area. I probably have done some of this with game. Yeah, 
sounds a bit better. Yep. And um, at this point, we'll also have a snare roll happen. So we can go to our snare, which is this here. I'm just going to grab one. I'm going to use it. Start out slow. I want to do a bar snare roll. One, two, three, four. Copy this. So, cut it in half. It. Got four bars of that. This. What I meant to do. Back over here, uh, we deleted the second copy of this. Oops. Now we have that. This is already pretty fast, so we may want to um, move this forwards. Something like Oh, that's the kick. Huh. I grabbed the kick instead of the snare. <laughs> Silly me. Um, well, we can get an idea. <laughs> Wrong drum. Wrong drum. It still sounded pretty cool, actually. I don't think I've ever heard a kick roll <laughs> before, but uh, maybe we'll make it a thing. Anyhow, um, so what we want to do, again, we're going to maybe start here. Or... Half. Weird that the uh, the one on the right had extended a bit too long. Um. There's four of those. There's our bad, and we can put this here. And now we've got our bar. It's on the wrong. It's on the wrong channel, and we have everything else muted. Let's hear the drums kick in. And let's take this, do, spread these out. Interesting. Um, okay, and let's hear it with the bass and the synth on top. So it's almost there, but we don't have quite enough emphasis. I think we need to have this. Maybe stop. Hmm. 
Hmm, maybe I'll just keep it. It's kind of nice. Something like that. I don't know. Let's see. Let me go into a breakdown. Um, I need to do another riser here. So. Okay, let's copy this over for now. Probably uh, mess with this a bit more in the future. I don't think I'm quite done with this track yet. For now, this is sounding pretty cool, I think. Okay, take it from top. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want this to repeat again. Maybe I want this to um, be a four bar section where I have some like baseline E and F here. That could be good. Base those out. Could fill out a little more space in the track here. Um, we could even maybe get away with having this portion of the uh, bar 17 through 21 or through 20 here uh, repeat. So another thing we could do is perhaps make this instead of a four bar an eight bar section, simplify our work a little bit of complexity of the track overall. Um, oh, I am feeling pretty good about where I've gotten here so far. I'm sad I couldn't get my buddy in here to uh, to come rap with us. We might be able to, uh, you know, maybe have him on the intro of this. He was saying he wanted in on it. He's been digging some of the other tracks I've been working on so far. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess while I'm here, uh, let me open up and save, actually. <laughs> save this. This is December Idea 2. Um, let's see... Something relatively recent. Let's just pick a random one. How about November? I see what that well, I guess November Idea 3 didn't get very far. Oh, this was some sound design I was doing. You can see I've got some effects here. This is a lovely base layer. So I'm definitely planning on using that for something. And then we've got the synth here, which I think was heavily filtered. Yeah, it's got some filtering going on. So, um, it's very nice for creating a lot of transients. Um, and um, you just play a single note, or you can play several. Something like that effect. Very cool. Can, uh, um, 
produce so many chill vibes. I'm really excited to do some stuff with that. I'm going to combine these two sounds. Um, but that, I guess, let's show something more put together. Some of these ideas are a bit loose. I, don't, I didn't mess with it at all, but... Okay, yeah, here we have something a bit more put together. Um, I don't actually remember what this is, so hopefully it sounds rad. A little sneak peek of something else coming up soon. This has had some mastering done to it, as you can probably tell. Uh, something I was working on a few weeks ago put together and uh, it came together pretty nicely I think this synth is a little shrill probably going to replace it with something you know a lot of these are kind of stock and definitely need some work but I you know as I was saying earlier I'm more focused on getting the sound put together if I can make it sound decent with crappy sounds I can make it sound decent when I go through and do some actual sound design um, like I will with search I actually have any surge instruments on this one if you're not familiar, Search is a really, really cool synthesizer. The only change we made there was the uh, position. Oh, is it not showing things? I wonder. Oh. Okay, so I have to tell it to change. Well, I hope that the audio was there. Oh, what have we got going on here? Interesting. Have this is uh, this board really nice. I love this, absolutely worth picking. Hmm. Um, and you can see they're sortable, we have all sorts of effects you can put on them mess with like sliders and stuff that do the effects mixing of all sorts of different effects as well there's a whole mixer here this is a really really advanced really advanced and like band filter we can just make it as lo-fi as we want press it up a little flutter
wonderful, wonderful keyboard. You can mess around with it. It also gives these these nifty um, chord buttons. Which is pretty cool. So you can mess around with those. Some pretty interesting stuff really easily. Hmm, I see. Oh. I see I left off in the middle of composing this part of keys, um, and they are not correct yet. Sorry about that. sneak peeks a couple sneak peeks into uh some stuff that we are going to be doing here soon i'm finishing up and releasing some of these songs here in 2023 i have um not just ideas from october or november but from all the way back to january and trying to come up with at least three or four ideas every single month so there's tons of stuff to finish up and i'm going to be doing it all on stream so if you like what you see here um leave a like leave a subscribe um would love it and uh, appreciate. And uh, yeah, catch me next time. Um, catch me next time on the stream. Maybe share some feedback. Let me know what you're thinking. Help me make this music awesome. Gotta take my people to the moon. <laughs>